Look at what that ship's carrying. It's got some some containers, but those are the propellers for all those windmills that we're seeing as we travel up here. That is really, really cool. Yep, that is so cool. Okay, back to fishing. Hello everyone, welcome to Measure Up Angling. I'm Joe Nett. This uh, time around we're going to do something really special. Connecticut Atlantic Salmon. Behind me is the Farmington River. Could you imagine ocean run Atlantic Salmon in this river? Well that's what the state of Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and the Fed were trying to do years back was restore Atlantic Salmon to these fisheries. People would come from all over the world to fish here. My brother and I were very fortunate. We each caught and released ocean run Atlantic salmon from the Connecticut River during the restoration program. It was an experience that will stay with me for the rest of my life. There's a lot of factors involved with the restoration program coming to an end. Say that uh, global warming and water conditions are probably top the list. But after years of uh, low return, the cost and a fish hatchery in Vermont suffering severe storm damage brought the program to an end. Uh, the Fed, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts all dropped out. But Connecticut saw something more. Decades had been spent developing a strain of Atlantic salmon that would actually return to the Connecticut River and our DEEP didn't want to lose that. So our legacy program began to keep the genetics of these salmon alive. And it gives us a unique opportunity to catch Atlantic salmon in the areas that they're stocked. If you'd like more information about the legacy program, check out the CT DEEP website. Here's some reminders of the program when it was in full swing. I've seen quite a few videos on river fishing for these stocked Atlantic salmon in the Shantucket and the Naugatuck rivers, but I haven't seen much on the lakes. So we're going to Crystal Lake in Ellington to sample some of this fishing. We're gonna show you some unusual fish behavior and also show you what we do to break things down and figure out how to catch stocked Connecticut Atlantic salmon. Check it out, I think you'll really like it. So let's get into the first day on the water. Let's call it round one. Now it's surprising, I would have thought it would be the reverse. The clouds, the clouds went away and the fish are getting active again. I thought they would have been active with the clouds, you know? Right there, right what? there, right there, right Oh, ho, ho, did you see that? Was that a salmon? Yeah, he cleared the water. Oh, clean out of the water. That might be one fish just, look, he just cleared the water. Oh man, there he goes again. Dude, we gotta get over there. Dude, I can't reach him with this. Right there, dude! Right behind us. No. Don't! He's right there! He's No, he's going the other way. He's right there, right there. See him? I see him. There's two of them. There's a whole school of them, dude! Dude. Oh! Dude. There was a whole stinking school of them, Brody. All right, that was pretty wild. I saw that one jump and I started following with my eyes and behind him, there had to be five or six more. That was cool though. That was, that was really cool. It was cool to see.
You know, the amazing thing is, is they're just jumping to jump. They're not jumping for food. They're just jumping to jump. Jumping to jump. Oh, right in front of us, right in front of us. Still coming. Jeez. Come on. Not even any trackers, any trailers or anything, you know? What the hell? Probably not used to eating bait yet. Yeah, but that's just it. You know, the spoons are more for a reaction kind of thing, you know? Flash, color, whatever it is. Just something to get them to, to, to react and thrash at it. I'm on! Shut up. Turn on that camera back there. Oh. What is it? I don't know, it might be salmon. It's a smallie. <laughs> Woo! It's a smallmouth. Crap, I thought it was a salmon. Ah, uh, well, it's something. Yeah. It's something. Tell you what, he slammed it. He's a beauty. All right, that was nice, exciting, but not what we were after. All right, thanks. So that was round one. We made some mistakes. I was drawing from my experience trolling for landlocked salmon. And honestly, we were fishing way too big. These fish that are being stocked are two to three years old. They're not full size salmon. They haven't reproduced yet. They haven't been spawned. And we were just fishing too big. You know, the fish showed themselves by jumping out of the water. So we were able to stay with them. We were able to put the spoons across their nose and not, not a bite, not one. But I honestly think that we were throwing offerings that were just too big for those fish so they ignored them the other factor too is they had only been in the water for maybe three or four days part of my thinking and breaking down what was going on was that these fish hadn't been in the water long enough to be acclimated and actually be feeding on the natural fish in the in the systems so going into the next time out i didn't make very many adjustments here's round two Thus, they, they may all be right in here. Maybe the wind just pushed them in. You know, bait fish got pushed in here, so maybe all the salmons are right here. Well, one thing that I had to do was target a specific one. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that in this wind. Pick one out. That, yeah, that's a pretty good oh, one. oh, that was a nice one, yeah. See that? There we go. They're up in the shallows. Oh, yeah. Another one. Well, I want to set us up, let the wind kind of blow us in there. Another one. See it? It looks like they're all one area. Look at that. <laughs> right. Another one down in there, Dust. They're they're all packed in here. Shh. <laughs> 
Jeez. Oh my lord, dust. They might not be. They might just be just stupid. Look at that. Coming right at us. You know, you'd think even if they weren't feeding, you could get a reaction strike out of them, you know? My gosh! Dust, this is what we were dealing with on Sunday. Jumping fish, putting the baits right across their nose, and no bites. Wait, you saw them? They seem to be relating to the sand. They're, oh my God, they're all right here. All of them. They're all right there. Facing into the wind. So they're still all grouped up. Come on, buddy. Come on, eat it. So they're just sitting over the sand. Ooh. I think something just tapped me, Dust, but that didn't feel like a salmon bite. Kind of interesting that it seems like they're relating to the sand, though. Can't believe you can't even get one to frickin' chase, you know? I guess I guess if you could get one to chase, you know you could get one to bite. Seems like we're in, we're around them close. They they don't want to jump. I guess they don't want to hit the boat. Or we're just spooking them. I don't know. All right, Dust. Throw throw off the um, off the left side. Let's let's try some trolling. And again. One more time. One more time. And again. And again. That was two different fish. Look at them, Dust. As soon as I moved away from there, they're, they're, Dust, they're, they're in there. They're just, they're just not bite. Yeah, yeah, I do have an anchor. Well, you want to do that? You can do that. All right, reel it up. Take us back down there and we'll drop anchor. Yeah, this, this wind is crazy. I didn't think it was supposed to get this bad today. Actually, it's just whenever I want to go out on the water. Okay, Eeyore. You still jumping? I haven't seen one in a little bit. A little bit mean meaning probably about two minutes. Seems like the main spot of activity was right around behind that uh, pontoon boat. There's there's one right there. Here, let me get us down there. Okay, go ahead and drop it, Dust. Because <coughs> we can always pan out line if we need to. All right, we're gonna give this a little bit of time. We don't we don't get a bump or a tr tracker or something. We're calling it quits. I just put that lure right out in front of those fish, Dust. They were jumping right here. Oh, 
know if it's just doesn't have the appeal. I don't. You got hit. Where are you throwing that spoon still? Yeah. Well, swing and a miss. That's still a swing. One just jumped over there by the bank. Two of them. Those are small ones, but tell you what though, this wind is whoo. I mean, small body of water like this having white caps that tight, it is definitely blowing hard. Yeah, I might have to, you know, we might have to just give it give it a few more days and yeah, try and let them get a little more, a little hotter. I mean, they're jumping all over the place, but we just can't seem to get them to bite. Yeah, maybe they're just not hungry enough yet. Well, if you notice, you see the color change back there? There is another sandy spot. They seem to be relating to the sand on the bottom. No, it's weird that they're in five, six feet of water, too, when you got 40 feet of water out there in the main lake. But here they are. I think, like you said, it's because this is where they were stocked, so they, they're still kind of locked. There was one. They're still kind of locked up here. Well, let's see what time it is. 10 of 12. If we don't get a bite or, or something going on before 12, let's just call it. This is miserable. Okay, Dusty's got one on. That's what's going on. We're bumping into him. Well, we got it. We now we'll just unhook him because he's got to be released. He's not. A, he's not a legal catch. Come here, buddy. Hey, small guy. Can I take a picture with him? Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you if you want to. I just. I really. I don't want to hurt him. Maybe I shouldn't at him. Hook, hold on. All right, I got the hook out. That's that sucks. Well, now you know what we're doing. Yeah, it looks like looks like we're just banging into them. Well, you know, you, you got location on them, and you know we're going through them if we're bumping into them, and they're just not biting. But we'll uh, we'll give it another ten minutes or so and see if we can't get one to actually eat it. See him down there flashing. Oh, I did, I did, I did. All right, yeah. All right, work him, work him. Yeah, he did eat it. Yeah, you did it, Dust. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you did it. Good one too. Awesome. Well, that's really cool. We finally got one out here in these really rough conditions. Dustin. Yes, you are the salmon guy. I should have known that he had it right because he was swimming to the boat. 
Well, yeah, I mean, the only thing that made you wonder is the few of those flashes underwater, like, like you know, he was trying to roll out of it or something. Why do you think he ate it? Huh? Why do you think he ate it? I don't know. It's just like you said, maybe he just finally saw it go by enough times and said, you know what? I'm killing it. Look, that's just, just awesome that you got one, you know? But you, you seem to be the salmon guy. You got him last year, you're getting him this year. Worked hard for that fish. That was a pretty good idea anchoring up here after Yeah, absolutely. Anchored right in the middle of them. I gotta say, this is some of the roughened conditions I've had out on this body of water. It's amazing, all this wind and waves and they're still jumping out of the water. Right in front of me, right there. Crazy. Okay, that was, uh, that was tough. That was really tough. Wind was absolutely brutal, white caps. But Dusty pulls it off again. Salmon guy. The Big salmon, salmon guy. <laughs> Sna snags one in the tail and ends up getting one in the mouth and gets it landed. A little bit bigger than last year's fish. It was real nice in the box going home. But uh, I think we'll be back. I think we're going to do it again. Really would like to get a big one. So this is to be continued. Today we got got them kind of compacted in a small cove where the wind was blowing into the cove and we were able to put that spoon past those fish over and over and over again and Dusty finally got one to bite. You know, I think next time we'll do what uh, what you suggested and bring some live bait. Yeah, it could work. It can definitely work. If we find them compacted in a spot like that and you can just let the shiners drift through, I think we'd have a really good shot. So we'll bring some live bait next time and see what see what happens with that. The wind would have to be a lot less. <laughs> you know what though? Bit. If you think about it, that wind bl would blow that bait right into the cove, right in there with the fish. So I, I would rather it be a whole lot less because that was absolutely brutal. But uh, if it's if it's blowing like that, we I think we can deal with it and have a shot at catching them on live bait. So we'll give that a shot next time. You know, these, these salmon, they, they were just recently stocked. They just don't seem to be on the feed yet. They should be, but they just don't seem to be biting that well. It takes a while for them to acclimate, hoping that as time goes on, the bite will get better. So we will be back. We're going to do it again. So stay tuned. So why do these fish jump? I'll tell you what, I don't know. Um, 13 years of guiding, I could usually give a pretty good explanation of fish behavior, watching them for as many hours and days and months as I, as I would, but the way these fish were jumping out of the water, I have no explanation. It might have something to do with the hatchery environment, but it was pretty amazing to see, and it was, uh, a visual way of staying on top of the fish. They showed themselves and they actually were jumping in the direction that they were swimming so you could get in front of these fish and put a lure across their nose. It seemed that these fish were using the top three feet of the water column. You would think that they'd be more dispersed but all over the lake fish jumping out of the water and it wasn't just that one fish that was jumping there would be a group of fish with that one fish with that singular fish even in the wind. Just, just incredible to see them jumping out of the water. Okay, round three for the salmon. We're gonna go give it another shot. Dusty's with me again. Dusty's the lucky salmon guy. He caught him last year. He caught caught the last one this year. We'll see if we can't get a real big one today. We brought some bait this time. Gonna give that a try. And. Uh, we were perch fishing yesterday, and I got the idea that maybe some smaller offerings will work for the salmon too. So I'm gonna to actually try some soft plastic today. 
more designed for perch or crappie fishing and see if I can get a salmon to eat that stuff. So we're going to go give it a shot, do the best we can, wish us luck. It's about two weeks now that they've been in the water, so we're hoping that they're a little more acclimated and they're willing to bite better. Uh, when they first hit the water, sometimes they're tough. I mean, trout, trout bite right off the bat, right out of the truck. But uh, the salmon, for some reason, they're they're a little less active when they get when they get stocked. And the first time out with Brody, we just chased them around. We couldn't get one to turn or even look at look at one of our offerings, one of our spoons. But uh, last trip at least we knew that they were interested because we were bumping into them there we go yep yeah. basically you know they'll swing around the bait and if they do that and they don't strike it a lot of times the bait ends up hitting their tail or hitting their body that's why so, i snagged that one in the back the last time yeah we had that one fish snagged so that that was the situation there we're hoping that they're going to be a lot more active we don't have the sun today it's kind of clouded up so i don't know how the spoons are going to work but hopefully they'll be a little bit more active, be willing to bite, bite better and uh, get a couple landed, maybe even a big one. A big one would be nice. That'd be really nice. A big one would be really nice. Hear a little drag. Yeah. That's what we want. Hear a little drag, definitely. And there's nothing like fresh salmon. Not store-bought salmon, but fresh. Nothing like fresh salmon. That's absolutely right out of the it. Lake. So yeah, it's a put and take fishery anyway, so we're definitely uh, out for meat today. <laughs> All right, well, it's a gorgeous day, not a lick of wind right now anyway. Bunch of people out here salmon fishing. We're already seeing some activity, but absolutely beautiful day. Let's see if we can't catch a couple. Dust, I was just on. He's right there. Look, right there. look, right look. Right look. Oh, I'm on. Yep. That was wild. That's a good one, too. whatever side he ends up coming up on. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild. Hey, good stuff. That was cool. All right. Boy, that was quick, huh? That was quick. Dustin, I had two of them ripping around this thing like nobody's business. Well, they're definitely feeding now. That was crazy. Man, I don't think I made three casts with this thing and I got one. You know, it was wild because I saw, I saw your hit and I saw the boil, so I cast it in front of it and I got instantly whacked. And as I brought it closer, I could see him spinning around bait down there. That, that was cool. That was really, really cool. Okay, like I said on the way here, I was seriously thinking about trying a, sm a lighter approach, a smaller bait. Uh, last time we were throwing the spoons, Dusty did get a nice one. But I really felt that maybe a smaller presentation was gonna, gonna do the trick. So I brought my crappie stuff and uh, using a light jig with a size, using a light jig with a size one hook and right now I'm using uh, half of a, of a sticko. Looks like a, a bait fish and I actually downsized it. You know, that's a, that's a three inch bait. I actually downsized it to basically one and a half inches, kept the tail and uh, wow, third cast with, with fish in front of us, I bagged one. So, that small presentation 
did the trick. Okay, we brought some shiners, but I doubt if we're even going to use them. It seems that a more uh, uh, erratic, hard presentation seems to be uh, the thing that's working. So the soft plastics, Dusty's still throwing a spoon. I think we're going to stick with the artificials. Seeing a few jump back here, see what happens. They don't seem to be moving around as good as they were when we first got here. Or some of the fish have moved out to the main lake, but we'll go hunt them down if we don't find them in here. We are still seeing a few jumpers back here, so. Beyond the main lake, they might be making big circles. Look, we don't get another one in here. We can go find another zone where they're, they're active. You're on? Yep. Yeah. Dang. I got one. I you got one. Oh, he's a yeah, that's a sm small get guy. Out there, get out there, get out there. Oh, right next to the boat. Boy, he bashed it, huh? I got one. Oh! Got him! Dust! Big one! Oh, that is crazy. That is crazy. Oh, man. Dustin, I had the whole school work in this thing. That's the problem with using treble and shit. Yeah, this is a mess. Okay. Yeah, this one's gonna get kept. He's all wrapped up and beat up and... Uh, you know what? Oh, I got him, I got him. All right, so, keep that one. We gotta release this one. All right, he's going. This is why I like my method. That guy's going back, beautiful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. That's why I like my mesh net. Should have brought the mesh one. Yeah, because this is kind of a mess. All right, hold on. Let me get this thing. Dustin, yeah, just like right the last here, time, just, right just like the last time, Dust, I had a whole load of them all over the thing. One of the things I want to make sure you guys know, the state of Connecticut, DEEP, has defined culling and it is prohibited so what you saw with that situation where we netted two fish and then I took one out of the well and threw it back that is not legal starting 2023 the only time culling is legal is when you're fishing in a bass tournament and that's a permit required bass tournament so you catch a small salmon but you want a bigger salmon make sure you let that little one go right away this is a put and take fishery, but you know what? We want everybody to have a chance at catching one of these things. So release those fish healthy, give somebody else a chance to catch them. Ban the rivers, you're using a lure with a free swinging hook, and I honestly think you should do that on the lakes as well. Number one, it does less damage to the fish. A treble hook can be really, really tough on fish. Number two, if you notice the whole situation with the net, that's not fun. Salmon twist and roll when they get in a net and they get that treble hook stuck in it. It's just going to take you time and effort to get that thing out. You don't want to cut your net or, and ruin it. 
and but you do want to get back in the water and catch another one so try a single hook presentation i honestly think it's better off all the way around it's better for the fish it's better for your net I was so busy trying to get hooks out, I didn't really, I mean, I saw them, I glanced up every now and then, but you were just like, this is unbelievable, they're everywhere. You know one thing, is I think that the fish that were against the bank over there were mixed with the fish that were feeding and they fed off of each other. They, they could have. Well, you activate one, you activate them all. You got that first, that small one to hit, and then the rest of them. I mean, I like I said, I had at least four of them actively working my bait. Oh, there they are. Oh that man! Was a giant. All right, go ahead over there. I feel like they're everywhere. It's just. I know, but I, right now I feel I feel like I'm chasing ghosts. Well, the four fish that I could see were all the same size as the one I hooked. But I gotta catch the, the only small one in the school. <laughs> we could have left right down there. We could have had two big fish. Yeah, yeah, we could have called it a day. But yeah, that's, uh, that's something too, you know, even though it's a put-and-take fishery, got it? Yeah, I see it. Even though it's a put-and-take put fishery, you're allowed one fish per license. That doesn't mean I can catch two and you can take one. It's, it's one fish per fisherman. So, so, yeah, got it. So the next one that I catch, if I catch another one, it's, I, I might just try to unhook it on the side of the boat and just let it go because I can't, I can't keep another one. That's why we gotta get you into a big one. T take two home. Oh, yep, just swirled in the same spot. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dust. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't have that, that. Okay, just wait. Hold your cast and wait that extra couple of seconds. I also don't wanna spook them with the motor. I mean, I know it's electric, but it's still spinning. Oh, yeah, dust! Yep. Oh. Come on! Little guy. That was crazy, Dust. He was right on you. I saw that swell. That was a big fish, too. You guys are eating this good! <laughs> Yeah, oh crap. That's a big fish dust. Now you go crazy. Look, I'm just trying to get just trying to get you off, dude. Come on. Come here. Line. They gotta be following a school. Is that a is that a L Y that he just puked up right there? No, that was my bait. Oh. All right, off he goes and he's good. All right, dust that one that was tracking you. That was the big fish. That was a flipping huge wake behind that bait. Dust over here. Coming towards us too. This is crazy. They must be on uh, that right there. You see the motion? They got to be on LY. That's maybe why this uh, this bait's working so well, because it really does. There, there they are. Well, what do we want to do? Uh, wait and see if. Put it in reverse. Okay. All right. 
because that, that's got to be the main school right there. These got to be some of the fish. Actually, that motion that we just saw could have been a trout, too, working the same bait fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're chasing. Are they coming at us? Got him? Oh, oh, that was cool though. Yeah, I know it was a little one, but let's see if there's a big one in there. That's crazy. Oh, that was him, Dust. That was a big fish. That was big fish dust. You see him rolling uh, down there? That was bigger than the one I got in the well, that's for certain. All right, where'd you guys go? That's a problem with the trouble. Yeah, they can twist out of it. it. Either hooks the heck out of them or they twist out. I saw the boil behind this thing and he, I don't know Dust, they, they kind of do that swing thing, you know? In other words, they get on it and they swing around it a couple of times before they finally decide that they're going to tag it. Yeah. I think it was a singular fish popped onto your bait and he was just the only one behind it. Couldn't ask for a better opportunity there, Dust. Oh! Oh, well, He's whirled on it. <laughs> Got him? There you go. Don't don't get crazy. Yeah. You're getting crazy. <laughs> All right, he's wrapping up again. You can deal with that this time. Good, he, un he untwisted, grab him. All right. Hey, got your fish. Woo, awesome dust. There we go. Anytime. I don't know how I did this. You didn't get crazy with him. Yeah, you did. You were reeling and your drag was singing. <laughs> It sure looked like you were getting crazy. Well, that that's cool. That's really cool. We... All right, Dustin, limit it out. Some motion out there. Oh. Hey, you know what? This is perfect. We'll chase him down to the boat ramp and call it a day. Oh yeah. Yep. Finally figured it out. Finally figured it out. All right, boats on the trailer, we're heading home. It was a really good day. Five salmon landed. Uh, two others hooked up and dropped. One really big one. It, it was fun, a lot of fun. Those things really, really do fight. It was kind of neat because it's a visual deal, chasing them around, watching them jump, and uh, figured out the situation. You know, we fished those, the salmon that were up inside of that shallow cove. They wouldn't bite for nothing. They were harassed heavy by guys all day. So 
we got off of them and went and fished open water fish and they were much more receptive to the artificials, to the spoons, to the soft plastics. That's the other thing too, I'm really happy I brought the soft plastics because uh, hey, I got three out of the five, Dusty got the other two on a spoon. So it was... Uh, still such a cool day, we had a, we had a really good time. We got two salmon in the well, so we limited out and uh, just just had a load of fun. It was only a few hours, so it was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, hey, you know what? You just learned what we learned, how to catch these salmon with soft plastics and uh, spoons, chasing them around. All right, we had a great day. Five fish, two nice ones for the frying pan. Okay. So let me give you a quick rundown of the regulations. If you're fishing the lakes, you can use all the techniques you use to catch trout. You just allowed only one fish. So bait, treble hooks, crankbaits, everything, everything that's legal to catch a trout is legal to catch a, a salmon in the lakes. In the rivers, it's a different story. No live bait, it's either a single fly, a lure with a free swinging hook, in other words, not fixed, no added weight. Trying to keep the factor of snagging fish down. If you notice, we snagged one on the lake. So we want to keep that possibility down and keep those fish in good shape. Well, I know some of you might be saying, thanks a lot, Joe. You showed me how to catch Atlantic salmon on a jig in soft plastic, but I fished the river. I can't use a jig. That's an illegal presentation. So what do I do? Check this out. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> no, 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 don't, just stay right there. Just stay right there. I'll work him. He's not big, but it's a fish. <laughs> Whoa. Get him out of there. Now he's getting crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, all right. right. Hey, that made the drive worth it right there. There it that is. The there it is. Right there, dude. Right. Here, okay, hold wanna... on. Hold on. I'm just going to let you unhook him and release him. Wow. Dude. Did it again. Yeah, yeah, baby. Single hook. Single hook. Soft plastic. Soft plastic. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> is that not awesome? Can you get him? Yeah, I got I got pliers if you need them. I got pliers too, but he's like it's weird. There we go. Oh, he's, he's sperming everywhere. Oh, yeah, buck, huh? I don't want him to. Oh, go. let's. Uh, no, I was gonna say we'll worry about that after, after the release. I'm gonna lift him up to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you want a picture or no? No, no, it's okay. Here, just lift him up so I can get get him on the camera good. Cooperate. Here, just, just lift him in the net. I want, I want to just get him and flip the camera. Good. Oh, yeah. Another salmon. Here, All see. right. Let me see if I can get him out of here. Shintucket salmon. All right. That is awesome. All right. Off you go, baby. Off you go. Hey, and you were right. He was right there. Was he on that? Just, just in that fairly close to the bank situation. Oh. Well, that was my first time to the Shintucket using an inline spinner with a soft plastic and caught one the very first time I went. You know, I really want to spend more time tweaking that river presentation and the lake presentation as well. I honestly think that it can be done better. Okay, one thing I want to put out there in closing. Crystal Lake and Mount Tom Pond where these fish are stocked, they are not big fisheries. This does make the salmon more accessible to the fishermen, but access is limited. So please be respectful to the landowners, be respectful to each other. Parking is limited, and I know that's going to be a hassle. Try and go during the week if you can, but please don't create any kind of situation. I mean, I'm hoping that this video is gonna be popular and everybody's gonna really enjoy it and wanna get out there and do it, and I hope you do. 
just please be understanding of the situations that there's not a lot of parking, there's not a lot of access, and be respectful to everyone. Oh, and Mount Tom Pond is no combustion engine, strictly electric or paddle. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get the opportunity to get out there and experience Connecticut stocked Atlantic salmon, whether it be in the rivers or in the lakes. It's really a cool experience, a lot of fun, and great table fare if you want to bring one home. So if you like this video, please subscribe. I hope you got something out of it. Go out there and catch them. We'll see you on the water.